Once upon a time, there were two little girls called Rose Red and Snow White. They lived with their mother in a cottage on the edge of a great forest. Every morning, they would get up early and tidy the cottage. When all was spick and span, Rose Red would go into the garden and gather flowers. Everything is lovely in the garden. All is beautiful to see. The butterfly gliding peacefully along, tasting the blossom on the tree. Meanwhile, Snow White would polish the old copper kettle until it shone like gold. Rub a dub a dub, rub a dub, rub a dub a dub, makes the dear old copper kettle shine. Though it's very, very old, it can shine like gold. So I rub a dub a dub, rub a dub a dub, till there's no copper kettle quite as shiny as mine. Rose Red had a pet lamb. <coughs> and Snow White had a little white dove. In the evening, when the work was done, they would all sit on the hearth by the fire, and their mother would put on her spectacles and read out of a great big book. One winter evening, when they were all sitting together and the fire was burning brightly, there came a knock at the door. I wonder who that can be on a cold night like this. Shall I answer it? Yes, please, Rose Red, and hurry up. It might be some traveller who needs shelter. Snow White, put the kettle on. Yes, Mother. Dear me, this bolt is stiff. All right, I won't be a moment. There. Goodness gracious, a bear. How do you do? I'm sorry to disturb you, but it's very cold outside and my nose is frozen. I wonder if I could sit by the fire and warm it up a bit. Oh, you poor bear. Come in. Bring him over here by the fire. It's all right, Lammy. He won't hurt you. Don't sit too close to the fire. You might burn yourself. Oh, you're very kind. A nose isn't much use when it's frozen, you know. A couple of skunks went by a moment ago and I didn't even notice. I, I wonder if you could knock the snow off my back. Oh, of course. Rose Red, fetch the brooms. Here you are, Mother, and here's one for you, Snow White. Now, one, two, three, all together. How's that? Oh, you're, you're too kind. Ooh, oh, oh, that's much better. I feel almost human again, if you'll if you pardon the expression. It must be very cold out there in all that snow. Oh, it's absolutely perishing, my dear. Nobody realizes what we have to go through. It's not a lot of fun to be a bear. I mean, just look at the sort of furs you have to wear. It's all tangled up and coarse. Well, I'd rather be a horse. Well, well, dash it all. I, I mean, it's, it's hardly fair. I can lie awake and think what a joy to be a mink or a squirrel or a fox or Persian lamb. Why, I think I'd sell my soul to be a mink-dyed marmot stool. But a bear is what I am, and it's most unglam. 
but it's what I am. I'm rather sleepy now. Will you excuse me? The bear slept soundly all night, and next morning was up bright and early. Sleep well, Mr. Bear. Oh, like a top, my dear. Well, I suppose I'd better go and do a spot of hunting. Could I come back again tonight? Why, of course you can. Oh, you're too kind. I must bring you some honey. Goodbye. Every night that winter, the bear would sleep by the fire, and every morning he would amble off to go hunting. And then one day it was spring. Oh, what an aroma! The fragrance of the blossom. The freshness of the morning dew. Oh, what a day for a nose. Will you be back at the same time, Mr. Bear? Oh, I'm afraid I won't. I have quite a lot of treasure in the forest, you know. It's safe enough in the winter when the snow is on the ground. But when it's warmer and the ground gets soft, those horrible dwarfs dig it up. Well, I must be off. See you next winter. Oh, oh. What have you done? Have you hurt yourself? I've scratched myself on the latch of the door. Are you all right? Oh, yes, thank you. I've, I've just pulled off a bit of fur. It'll soon grow again. It's wretched stuff, you know. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Lammy. <coughs> and goodbye, Dove. Rose Red, did you see what I saw when he pulled away that bit of fur? Yes. Instead of skin, there was gold. In the best of spirits, Mr. Bear wandered in the forest. Spring, spring, hey ho for spring, what a truly wonderful thing is spring. Spring, spring, there's a tingling in my paws, and I think I know the cause. It's spring, 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 spring. Far away, Rose Red and Snow White were gathering sticks. Spring, spring, hey ho for spring, what a truly wonderful thing is spring, 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 from my fingers to my toes, every particle of me knows, it's spring, 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 spring. Suddenly, they heard a sound. Oh, help! Somebody, quick, help! That sounded like someone in trouble. Where did it come from? Over there, I think. As they drew nearer, the sound grew louder. Oh, help! Oh, oh, help! There he is. Isn't he small? Why, he only comes up to my waist. And what a long white beard he has. Look, his beard is caught in that fallen tree. Little girl, come here. Oh, oh! Can we help you, Mr. Dwarf? Of course you can, you foolish girl. Do you think I like being caught by the beard? I was splitting this tree for firewood when one of the wedges flew out. The tree sprang back and here I am, trapped by my whiskers. I know what to do. I'll hold you round the waist, Mr. Dwarf. And Rose Red, you hold me round the waist. And then we'll all pull together. Good idea. That's right. Hold on tight. Now, one... Two, three, four! Oh, stop, stop! Oh, that was a silly idea. I'm sorry, Mr. Dwarf. Have we hurt you? Of course you have. I know what to do. I'll use my scissors. There. You're free. You stupid girl. You cut six inches off my beard. Some children have no brain at all. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Dwarf. I'm very sorry. Don't run away. Ah. He's picked up his sack and gone. Well, there's gratitude for you. What's this on the ground? It's a precious stone. It must have fallen from the sack. Hello, oh. Bear. Hello, have, Bear. Have you seen a dwarf anywhere? Yes, we've just cut one loose. Oh, bother. I've been trying to catch him for ages. Next time you see him, do you think you could hang on to him for me? We'll try. Oh, thank you so much. You're too kind. Next day, Rose Red and Snow White went to the river to fish. Down beside the river, I like to wend my way. 
through the rushes by the willow I can watch the fish come out to play Down beside the river I take my rod and line In the rushes by the willow All the world is absolutely mine Every fish takes a look at my own bent hook That I dangle there in vain But they've seen it before So they say once more Rose red must be here again Down beside the river By the rushes fall I adore being there So I don't really care If I never catch a fish at all Oh, ah, oh! What's that? Why, it's that dwarf again. His fishing line's tangled up with his beard. Oh, ah, help! And look, there's a big fish on the hook. He'll be pulled into the water in a minute. Help! Ah, oh! It's all right, we've got you. Get me away from him. There's only one way to do it. The scissors. My beard! You stupid girl! You've cut off another six inches of my beard. How could a child be so stupid? Twice. Give me my sack, girl. Here it is. Why, look, it's full of jewels. Don't be so inquisitive. Give it to me. No, you shan't have it, not until Mr. Bear gets here. Give it to me, little girl, or it'll be the worst for you. Here, Snow White, catch. I've got it. Give it to me. Hurry up, Mr. Bear. Catch, Rose Red. Give it to me this instant. Mr. Bear, quick. I'm coming. Don't let him get the jewels, Rose Red. There. Got you at last. Ah. Oh, Mr. Bear. You shouldn't have done that. I think you've killed him. It was the only way I could break the spell. You see, I'm not really a bear. That dwarf turned me into one many years ago. I'm really a prince. Oh, oh dear. I feel most peculiar. Look at his paws. They're turning into hands. And there's a crown on his head. He's turning back into a prince again. My, isn't he handsome? Snow White, Rose Red, how can I ever thank you? My treasure is safe. And I am a prince once more. Come with me to my castle. My father, the king, will give you the reward you so richly deserve. So Rose Red and Snow White went with the prince to the castle. And when they grew up, Rose Red married the handsome prince. And Snow White married his brother. And they all lived happily ever after. Everything is lovely in the garden. All is peaceful and serene.